Hi. How are you? I am just warning you. I have a pen. Oh, wait, hold on. Here it is. And a phone. So I am well armed to be a dictator because apparently that's all it takes. Uh, it's just hard to point out who's a bigger bully between the president and the governor of New Jersey. But two years before Obama took the highest office, he seemed like a level headed guy. He seems so cool. The powerful ether that permeates the Oval Office turns the humblest of men into brutes. And Christie already has a pretty darn good start in that direction, at least according to his critics. I wish the president would executively order himself to go back in time and be straight with his staff, his cabinet, and the American people on Benghazi. I wish a lot of things. I wish I never heard the name Kelly Thomas. I'm just glad that you're here, baby. It's the Independence. Hey there, I'm Kennedy, along with Reason Magazine Editor-in-Chief, his name is Matt Welch. Camille Foster from Freethink Media. Together, the three of us are the independents. We're tired of the malarkey, the nonsense, and the rubbish. We demand better, and we're going to get it by gum. Well, let's get right to the party panel, shall we? Very good. Bernard Whitman is a piece of human cotton candy. He's soft, pretty, and liberal just like I like him. And Bill Spadia is a New Jersey Republican and host of a TV show called Chasing New Jersey. I don't know if he's caught anything yet. You gotta ask Snooky, I guess. All right, have phone, have pen. We'll dictate. What the hell is wrong with the president? Today, he said this. I've got a pen and I've got a phone. Uh, and I can use that pen to sign executive orders uh, and take executive actions and administrative actions that move the ball forward. I've got a handful of pens and I've got two phones. One up, Brosif. What the hell is wrong with the president? Did he lose his mind? I the have a whole same. opinion, by the way, so ask me later. Yeah, the same thing that was wrong with the previous president and kind of the one before him. The thing that's remarkable to me, and maybe our Democratic friend can help us out a little bit, back in 2007 and eight. The bookstores were filled with books like The Imperial Presidency, right? This was an unprecedented Bush Cheney kind power of power grab. And it was, actually. There was, these were, Charlie Savage wrote a great book about it. Um, this was uh, an entire kind of rationale for the original Obama presidency was to be against overweening executive power and executive authority. There's a great Q&A with him that Charlie Savage did for the Boston Globe in December 2007. And it's just filled with stuff like, well, warrant, warrantless surveillance of American citizens in defiance of FISA is unlawful and unconstitutional. Wait, who said this again? Senator Barack Obama. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing how far he's gone from that. This is executive orders. This isn't necessarily signing statements. Is but he burning it, down the Reichstag? He's not burning down the Reichstag. He's just acting like a president. But that is disappointing, especially considering how he ran for president. All right, Camille. Hi. Yeah, well, it's, it's, this is super interesting. I mean, the left hasn't completely disappeared on this issue, but any passion and fire that they had before when it was the other guy has seemingly disappeared. I have to admit that I am constantly surprised by the president, and I shouldn't be, but I'm constantly surprised by the ways in which he can totally contradict himself. Mm -hmm. I should stop doing that. This, this isn't quite surprising. Like All of these folks apparently have a tremendous capacity for dishonesty and hypocrisy. I will tell you this. Politics zaps greed. It zaps morals. It creates greed. And it's, it's sad, Bernard. Well, when you don't Why have do they lose their no, ideals? When you don't have a partner in government, when you don't have someone in the Speaker of the House that controls caucus, that can actually deliver legislation that the president can sign, you have to still go to work every day for the American people. And that's what the president has done. He said, you know what? If you don't give me legislation that I can actually sign, I'm going to go and do the job that I was elected to do and put the American people back to work. Look, here are the facts. You would be, okay, by the way, Bernard, my, my no. friend, my new friend, welcome to the Independence, by the way. You would be having kittens if a Republican president is. I know you no, would. George because George in, the same in, thing. in two years, and you're going to come back and you're going to. You, you would but, not, a Republican president, you would not be giving me the same look, here, malarkey here, talking points. Here are the facts. The facts are the economy is expanding, went up 4.1% in Q3, but we're not adding enough jobs. 74,000 jobs is paltry. And what the president said to his cabinet is, we need to put America back to work. We need to grow the economy. And if the Republicans in, in the House cannot get their act together and work with the Democrats, then he's going to do something no, about it. I don't think there's anything you wrong with that. They're, they're all as useful so. as teats on a boar. Well, it's Hi, a nice how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing Hi. great. It's what a nice narrative that they're trying to portray. I think the problem is that the president did have the House and the Senate when he got there. He had his guys. He got his legislation. It was called Obamacare. And the American people threw the bums out. 
And I think that's the problem. So now he's changing the narrative and saying, okay, I've got these guys on Capitol Hill that have, by almost every poll that you see, a low teens approval rating. He's saying, well, I've got the perfect boogeyman. Let me go make them the enemy. And it's not working. Look at his okay. approval ratings. Two, two things here, Bill. Number one, he knows he's going to lose big in the midterm elections. He knows it. And, so. and this is a concession by saying, I have a phone, I have a pen. I don't care what right. you do at the polling place. This is what I'm going to do. And that's bad news bears. Second, if you're asking Dr. Kennedy, and thank you very much for asking, sure. the president <laughs> is clearly depressed. He is detached from the job. He is upset, apparently, according to the National Choir, <laughs> the oh, newspaper. Oh, well, yes. Michelle's leaving him? At the, at the state <laughs> of his marriage, yes. I heard that. And uh, who knows if that's true, but he, he clearly <laughs> is exhibiting the signs of someone who is so distracted and despondent and depressed. I think he needs antidepressants. Because he's showing up to work and he's challenging the conversation. He, he's not showing up to work he, mentally. Look, physically, he is. is. If this, if, if that, if this riles up, if this riles up the Republicans to actually do something like pass immigration reform, which will be a huge boon to the economy, so much the better. Do, do you at least, though, have a problem with the, the, the hypocritical nature of what's happening here, the notion that there is a legislative and an exec, executive and here's, a judiciary here's branch? Right. Here's but, 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 can you, but, but before you before you get ready to sort of give me a standard talking point, we well, can at not. least admit that this is this is not this is not what we would like to see happen. Well, right. Uh, if this was someone else, Obama, you have a problem with. The problem with Barack Obama is that he does not spend enough time with members of his own party and the other party. The problem with D.C. is the polarization. No, it's not well, it's because, it is. It's because he is a little bit detached. He's a little bit aloof. And if he had spent more and time in the first few years you know what? If you, of actually developing if relationships you look at some of the, with the other party, then we'd be in a better spot.